So this video is a service video for the Airtronic heater or the SPAR heater. Uh, these heaters are in um, some of the trailers down at, uh, for SGB, uh, most prominent in the hair and makeup trailer, 53 foot. I don't know the number designation for that trailer, but also there's a 53 foot uh, honey wagon, and I don't know that number either. But these uh, heaters need to be serviced on an annual basis. Uh, and what happens with them is they uh, basically carbon up from uh, running, you know, just general usage. Uh, what will happen is if you don't service them, you're going to find out that you have a non-starting situation, which will uh, cause it to smoke and it's going to cause it to uh, just not operate at all. Um, so what happens uh, is you need to take this unit apart and basically decarbon it. Um, and what will uh, build up in there is the soot, just like from any diesel-fired engine. Uh, this is probably not as efficient as some ones that need less service, obviously. But... Uh, in order to do it, you're going to find out uh, that it's really fairly simple to do this. Uh, what we do is first by taking start by taking the case off, and then the heater will lift right out of the case. And then at that point, uh, we start disassembling the heater to get at the parts that need to be decarboned. Now, to start with, uh, we have a fan. This fan here has two purposes. Uh, one purpose is it sucks air from inside the cabin, and it forces it over, over across these fins. This is basically a big heat sink, and it uh, pushes the heat away from these fins, and that's how you get your heat. Uh, the second part, is an internal fan that pulls air through here for combustion and then it pushes it through the combustion chamber creates a vacuum that pulls the fuel in and there's a blow plug that heats it up and then it uh, fires off and that's what creates the heat inside of this so in order to get at that first thing we have to do is remove this box now in this particular heater this box uh, controls everything that the heater does. Uh, some of the other heaters don't have this style of box. They simplified it. Uh, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but this little box, if it goes bad, is pretty expensive. So you have to uh, weigh out what it costs to, uh, to replace this or uh, find a used heater to rebuild or a new one. Or, but... Uh, this is just a bunch of plugs that get unplugged. Uh, they only go in one position. I'm going to zoom in on them right now so we can see. So what we have, if you see the, the little notches inside of these, uh, you're going to see that they're different. One's forward, one's backward. That means they can only plug in one way, uh, so don't force them. When you go to put it back together and uh, just make sure they're all plugged in when you do put it back together otherwise you're going to have an inoperable heater. Uh, so the first thing I like to do is I'm going to take this fan off and beneath the fan there's a gasket. Now what happens mostly with these gaskets is they will get very hot from the use of this heater. Uh, the heater gets so hot that you really can't even touch it, which these gaskets are made from a high temp gasket material. But uh, this particular heater I've already serviced, but you can see this gasket uh, right here. It's actually got a piece of metal inside of it on either side of the fiber gasket and that's what supports the uh, fact that it won't uh, 
deteriorate as fast as it would if it was just a regular gasket. Now, as that fan blows, it's going to blow air into this unit here. Now, this is the combustion chamber. And around the outside of this chamber, on this side of this, is where the air goes, flu, uh, goes through and it creates a vacuum that will suck the fuel that gets put into here. And this tube feeds this unit right here where the glow plug goes in. Now I'm going to take the glow plug out next because it's a lot easier to do uh, now and pretty much have to do it now. <laughs> but there's two different tools you use for this. This tool comes with a new glow plug when you order the glow plug. And you'll notice that it just has a notch around it. The notch is going to go around these uh, wires. Now if you don't have this tool, you could get a wrench in here if you have to, to take it out. But then you would have to take the entire unit apart to do it. This tool is designed to take the glow plug out with the fan still installed. Uh, I went and bought a snap-on tool, and uh, the number on it is a FRX M12, and it's just a uh, very nice tool. Of course, if you know tools, you know snap-on makes a very good, expensive tool for everything, right? But uh, the glow plug is not really designed to be cranked in there it has a uh, it has a, a beveled seat uh, uh, seat on it I don't know if you can see that so it just creates a, you know it just creates the contact needed to make a good seal what happens with the glow plugs and uh, a lot of what I find out as the service I've been doing is uh, these units will be run on low voltage. Uh, it's very important that the voltage be correct when these units are running. Most of them are designed to shut down operation at 11 volts. But even before that happens, the unit starts to fail. Uh, this glow plug doesn't get hot enough to ignite the diesel fuel but it gets hot enough to create a, a film around this. And the film is like a really hard, crusty buildup on it. And you, when you take it out, you can actually pull that off. But if that's on there, it just will not operate. And people think that because of that, that this part is bad. And that's not always the case. It could be bad, but it's not always the case. Uh, what this does is inside this chamber right down in this hole I'm pretty sure you won't be able to see it but inside that hole there's a little screen and what this screen is designed to do is uh, this screen will uh, soak with diesel fuel and then when this glow plug gets hot it sits inside this screen like this and what happens is when this turns red hot it ignites that fuel and then it goes into that burning chamber and then the fan blows air over it and sucks all that fuel and flame out and uh, then it exits through the bottom here so what happens is if it has low carb or uh, high carbon or low voltage operation when this gets saturated with fuel and this doesn't burn correctly this gets clogged up and then what happens is you will have a uh, failure and the failure visible is you'll have a lot of white smoke pouring out the bottom or you'll have a, a actual diesel fuel dripping out of the exhaust port so what happens uh, most of the time is when you take this filter out you destroy it and that's why you have this new filter and new tool to put in when you do your service 
Uh, this is a brand new filter in there, so I'm not going to sacrifice it. But let me see if I can get a picture of it. I don't know if you can see that silver part down inside there is a brand new filter. Now, when you take that filter out, what you're doing is uh, just using some kind of pick and a needle nose pliers or whatever it takes to get it out of there. Uh, don't drop it down inside, otherwise it's a pain. Uh, and after you get it out, this tool is designed to put it in at a certain depth. You can see the steps on it. Now this is not a tight fit on this, so I'm going to show you the way that I do them after we move to the next step. And the next step right now is to remove the burning chamber or the combustion chamber. Now these are put together with a combination of uh, Torx screws or Phillips head screws and it could be all Torx or all Phillips but this one has Torx on the inside and Phillips on the outside so you're going to want to have a variation of tools when you do this. Uh, some are different sizes. Most of the time I run across a, a T25 or a T20 uh, and that's what the, ends up being holding this stuff together. Now when you pull this out this when it's when it's dirty or in a failed position is going to be covered in black soot or or uh, fuel oil soaked soot and it's going to be just a mess so what I like to do is I like to wear gloves obviously otherwise it's you know it's kind of like uh, touch and never sees it's all over your body uh, let me see if I can get down inside here with a light and uh, see what's going on so if you look inside there all those little holes are where the flames come out and what will happen is when this thing is in failure mode or it's been severely neglected or uh, just needs service is this whole inside is going to be covered in soot now down by in the bottom you could have a hard buildup of uh, diesel fuel that's been uh, carbonized and it's very hard to get out so I take picks and I get down inside with a pick and start picking at all this stuff. And then what I do after I get everything loose with a pick is I'll just tap it on the bench. And then I take brake clean to get all that cleaned out of there. And then I also sh uh, shoot brake clean through this fuel tube. And then the fuel tube comes right into here. And then this is where that glow plug goes and the screen. And since we got the screen on our mind, when you have that old screen out, in order to make it easier to put in, when after you get done cleaning this, you can have this in your hand like this. And I just put it on here, and then you go like this, and then just push it in until it bottoms out and the screen is installed. The next thing we do is we look inside the actual chamber. Now what we have here is just a it's just a big heat sink and when that flame goes down inside here it just goes out and heats all that aluminum up and then uh, right down here right down here is your exhaust port which is this one right here so your exhaust port is inside the, this chamber and the, as the air blows out, it just empties out of that bottom there. So what I do is, before I spray this with brake clean, uh, unless it's soaked with raw diesel fuel, uh, if, uh, I'll take this wire brush if it's dry and powdery, and I'll actually get down in between all these fins inside here. And then that breaks up 
the carbon that's built. I don't know if you can see a little bit of it there. Um, and then after that, then I take brake clean and spray it out. Now, the thing about brake clean is you don't want to burn that. So after you get done cleaning this with brake clean, is you want to make sure it's good and dry before you try to start this up. Otherwise, it's a real toxic odor that comes out of there. And you, barely, you can barely breathe, I'll tell you. I made that mistake more than once. So after this is all done, we end up getting the new gaskets. They have different kits and different gaskets. This is, uh, this is the combustion chamber gasket. And this one is just called the uh, fan gasket. That's all they call it. So, And I'll put together a list of all the things for the different heaters down here. So what we want to do is in reverse order, we just put this all back together. The gaskets only go in one way. So it's uh, pretty easy to go back together. Uh, when you go to put this in, I like to put the screen in first. Otherwise you have to try to feed that screen through this hole and put it in. It's just easier. It's uh, not the end of the world if you forget. Uh, and then we just go in reverse order. So uh, I can be quiet for a minute here. I like to start all the screws before I tighten them because this aluminum, if anybody's ever had the special experience, when it strips out and you gotta drill it out and tap it, oh, it turns into a, a mess. So, next thing I'll do is I'll put uh, the glow plug back in just because it's a little easier doing it with two hands. Uh, you can get in there and kind of hold it to get it started because you don't want to strip that out either. Uh, should thread in very simply by hand. And it just has a compression edge on it to tighten it. And uh, you don't have to really reef on this. You don't have not much more than what a spark plug is if you ever change your spark plugs. Or like 10 to 10 to 15 foot pounds of torque is really all you need on that. Then you take your fan, make sure you got your gasket. Like I say, it only goes in one way. So it's kind of handy the way they did it, I guess. Always start it by hand first, otherwise you're going to find yourself in a world of hurt someday. So what you have to make sure of on this glow plug is make sure that this is uh, not hard or cracked or there's any holes in it because this is part of the system that blows the air into the chamber and you could possibly get uh, feedback and uh, carbon dioxide coming out if it, for some reason it uh, doesn't work right. Uh, the next step is you take your box. Now when you put this back in I like to do this twice in my mind because there's nothing worse than finding out this doesn't work. You 
because you rush through it. And uh, so I just take my time putting these back in. And uh, after I get them in, I'll show you what else I do to this. wires just make sure they get put in the right spot otherwise they just don't uh, doesn't want to go together easy and this should just slide right down one screw in the top to hold this in place it's also held in place by this little bracket right here you know little tong plastic tongs and uh, then we just tighten that up Now, before you put it together, I like to see this one in general I forgot to put in. So, uh, turn this upside down and make sure all your wires are plugged in. Looks like I made a mess of these. So, I'm going to fix it. Just had it tied up a little bit. You notice that they all plug in real nice. They go down, they have little rubber seals on. Keeps any kind of water or moisture getting in there. You see these here. And they do only go in one way, so don't force them. Uh, and then after that, you're done. You're ready to uh, you're ready to test your unit. So in my case, I have uh, full wire harnesses that I use to bench test them when I'm here. Uh, I don't know that you're going to want to do that because they're pretty expensive, but uh, you can just put it back in the truck or the trailer. But uh, in this case, there's little tabs that these sit in. I don't know if you can see them here. They just sit in place, and this little grommet goes and make a nice. Uh, seal for the airflow otherwise you get you know airflow out now this cover just goes back on now it does clip in but this one somewhere along the line got busted up so I found that this one had a screw in when I got it so the only thing you got to do and that's I mean if that's what you got to do to make it go back together right that's what you got to do but when you put the screw a new screw in make sure it's not long enough or make sure it's long enough but not too long where it's going to interfere with this fan movement now this fan is just silky smooth when it moves if it's not silky smooth this isn't uh, oriented in the right spot in the case or some other kind of thing but make sure that that is just smooth as silk when you're done now this is an important seal because it keeps gases and, and and exhaust from coming back into the cabin this goes up against the metal plate and the metal plate sits on the floor uh, what i do when i test them is uh this little tool I have right here does two things for me. I'm able to run it on the bench just to make sure that it works properly, but this tool that I have actually will bring up a code that it could tells basically tells me what's wrong with it before I even go to, to take it apart. Tells me if it has a bad fan, tells me if it has a bad control module, tells me if a, if a glow plug is bad or, you know, in, let, in, in that mode uh, of course they don't make this anymore I've had this for about 12 years now but they, the new version is uh, something similar and it comes with a, a wire loom and I'm going to see if they have something out there available that that's not 
like that. But uh, this unit, when you uh, plug it in to the harness, uh, when you plug this unit into the harness, short, uh, shortly away, away from this, there's a, a service port for these plugs right here that plug in, and it plugs right into the existing harness that's in the trailer. And uh, that's how I test mine. I actually have a separate harness that I hook all up with fuel pumps and, and everything else. So the last thing we do with our service is inside this. This is a, the pulse pump. Now this pump isn't a constant run pump. It just goes tick, 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 tick. And it feeds just a minuscule amount of fuel. Now this particular pump takes a 12 millimeter. And then you take, just I use adjustable because it's just quicker. Now this just unscrews. Now inside of this, on the end of this, there's a fuel filter. Now the fuel filter, you can see it if there's a problem with it. Uh, the hardest part to do is getting this filter out without breaking it or putting a hole in it or whatever. But if you look inside here, let's see if I can even see that. I don't know if you can see that. See that little hole there? That's all we have as a safety net between crap in the tank and that little hole is this filter. So this is an important filter to have in. Do not run it without a filter. Uh, even if you have to go to the parts store and get a, a something little filter to put in line, don't do it because you're going to wreck the pump. And the pumps, you know, of course that pump's about 100, 130 bucks. Nothing's cheap for these things, but uh, they do make filter replacements. And I will put together a, a whole list of what we need for these things. And we'll try to make a, a good supply to make sure no one uh, is without. To make sure we keep going down there. And uh, that should do it. Uh, if you've got any questions, you can uh, contact me. So, thank you.